Welcome to Wednesday, July 22nd. I'm Pastor Jim Krieger from Holy Cross Lutheran Church in Saginaw, Michigan, welcoming you to our traditional worship service as we continue to study the petitions contained in the Lord's Prayer. For those who have received the congregational email, please refer to the lyrics of the hymns appointed for this service. If you are joining us and have access to the Lutheran Service Book Hymnal, please turn to hymn 770 and join us in singing the three verses, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. in the Lord. Let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, 
I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, Shaper and Ruler of all things, we pray for your great mercy that you guide us towards you, for we cannot find our way. Guide us to your will and to the needs of our soul, for we cannot do it ourselves. Mold our minds to be steadfast to your will and truly aware of our needs of body and soul. Strengthen us against the temptations of the devil. Remove from us all lust and unholy desires and shield us daily against our foes, seen and unseen. Teach us to do your will, that we may inwardly love you before all things with a pure mind. You are our maker and redeemer, our help, comfort, trust, and hope. Praise and glory be to you now and forever, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Join me in confessing our common Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now turn to the email that you received or to your hymnals to hymn number 766 as we join in singing the words of verse 7, Our Father who from heaven above. and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Does God ever tempt you? Does God ever test you in a way that leads to temptation? The answer completely depends on either who you ask or where you look for the answer. The story is told of a pastor who was confronted with these very questions by one of his parishioners. So he began to prepare a sermon dealing with temptation. He decided to have a conversation with brother pastors to see what insight they could provide. And after many hours of talking and even some debating, he was left with no crystal clear answer to the question, does God tempt us? Determined to come up with the answer, he turned to his vast library of 
commentaries, and other religious and secular literature. His desk was soon covered with no less than 35 different books on the subject of sin and temptation. But it is important to note the Bible was not among the 35 books. Later on, a member of the congregation who knew he was spending time specifically preparing a sermon on temptation asked, So, Pastor, have you found the answer? Does God lead us into temptation? The pastor responded, Yes, no, and maybe. Now, had that pastor taken the time to consult the Word of God contained in the Bible first and only, rather than 35 other books and resources, he would have saved countless hours of reading and frustration and discovered this truth recorded in James chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when by his own evil desire he is dragged away and enticed. This truth about temptation from God's holy word is a truth for us to believe without doubt and a truth that must be shared. For this truth brings an absolute comfort in the face of the recurring question, does God tempt us? And scripture answers, God never tempts us to sin. God never provides a test that leads us to sin. We learn this even further from 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. God will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will provide a way up so that you can stand up under it. So the question comes to many a sinner's mind. Since God cannot and indeed does not tempt anyone nor lead us into temptation through testing, where do temptations come from? That answer again is clearly taught in the scripture. In fact, Martin Luther himself described the, with the answer with this phrase. Old defeated enemies. The old defeated enemies are the devil, the world, and our own sinful flesh. They are old. They are defeated. Yet, they continue to be our enemies today because of our sinful nature. Genesis chapter 3 records how first Eve, then Adam, fell from perfection through temptation, but not temptation from God. Temptation from Satan who appeared to Eve in the form of a serpent. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil was placed in the Garden of Eden by God himself as a test of Adam and Eve's obedience to his single command not to eat from it. God had already provided in them the knowledge of right and wrong, and God had given them free will to choose the right and the wrong. So God had provided them every chance to obey him. Yet, the twisting of God's words by the serpent led to the temptation to Eve, her sin of eating the fruit, and then providing that same temptation to her husband Adam, who also ate the fruit God had forbidden. 
So obviously, there is a difference between temptation and testing. What God provided as a test to Adam and Eve through obedience to his command not to eat from the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil contained no temptation at all. God did not lure them into temptation through this test. For again, remember the words of Scripture. God cannot be tempted, nor does he tempt anyone. Eve, then Adam, gave in to Satan's temptation to be like God. And that original sin has been passed down through every generation to this very day. But what about the temptations we face each day from our sinful nature and sinners around us? How can God use them for any good? Again, the Bible provides the answer. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 begins this answer. God will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. God himself promises to strengthen you during every time of temptation. But he will not make your decision for you. In matters of temptation and the knowledge of good and evil, God has given you free will to make that choice. He has written his law onto your heart, so you already possess the knowledge of what is God-pleasing and what is sinful. In fact, our guilty conscience is the clearest evidence that we possess this knowledge from God in our heart. All we need to do is act on it. But here comes the precious healing balm of the gospel when we face temptation and fall into sin and are absorbed and overwhelmed by a guilty conscience. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is the gospel. God the Father desires that we sinners come to him with a heart that seeks forgiveness. So thanks be to our Heavenly Father that in love for sinners he sent his one and only Son who not only experienced temptation, enduring the face-to-face -face test with the devil himself, but God sent his son Jesus, our Savior, who triumphed over temptation and then submitted himself to death for us, death on the cross, bearing our guilt and our punishment required by sin. And through the shedding of his blood, washed away that guilt and eternal condemnation. Does God tempt us? No, God never tempts us. Does God provide tests for our faith that show our trust in him? Absolutely, God provides those tests of faith. But during the test, God the Father also promises to provide the strength to bear under it and even the way out of it. But through every test, may our faith, reliance, and trust continue to grow in him who in love gave his one and only Son to provide the greatest way out from sin, death, and the devil the cross of Jesus and the empty tomb through which our sins confessed are forgiven and death has no everlasting grip on us. 
but we rise from the grave at the coming of Jesus, who receives us body and soul united in the mansions of heaven. Let us pray. Loving Father, we believe that in all things you work for the good for all who love you. When we are tempted to sin by the devil, the world, and our own sinful flesh, give us strength and wisdom to choose what is right and pleasing to you. Help us to feel your presence in every time of temptation, as well as during every difficult time of trial in our life. Like St. Paul, lead us to rejoice in our trials, our sufferings, even our temptations, because through them we grow in our reliance and trust on you for the strength to choose the right and to resist all manner of temptation that leads to sin. May it be so each of our days as we live our life through faith in Jesus Christ, through whom our sins are forgiven. Amen. May the peace of God that passes our human understanding now guard and keep your heart and mind in that one true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. We bow our heads as we continue with the prayer of the church and the Lord's Prayer, which we speak together. Heavenly Father, God of all grace, waken our hearts that we may never forget your daily blessings, but steadfastly thank and praise you for all things that are good and pleasing to you that are sent from heaven above that we may also live in holy reverence until with all your saints we praise you eternally in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have given us this good land as our heritage. Grant that we remember your generosity and constantly do your will. Bless our land with honest industry, truthful education, and an honorable way of life. Save us from acts of violence and discord among our citizens, and every evil word and action that only serves to divide us even more. Bless all elected leaders across our nation, and continue to provide faithful trustworthy and wise leadership that seeks to serve the needs of all. Especially bless and guard the lives of all who serve in law enforcement, those who serve on the front lines in the medical profession, and those who rise each day serving through our armed forces to safeguard the citizens of this nation and to defend those who seek freedom around the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Father of all mercies, God of all comfort, our only help in time of need, look with favor upon all your servants who are hospitalized at this time, especially those we know and lift up to you from our hearts. Assure them of your mercy. Deliver them from the temptations of the evil one. And give them patience and comfort in their illness. If it please you, O Lord, restore them to health or grant them grace to accept this tribulation with courage and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Savior Jesus, it is in your holy name that we lift all of our prayers to our Father in heaven and ask that in these troubled times across our nation and around the world, 
the Holy Spirit would turn more sinners to call upon your name, to humble themselves, to seek and pray to the Father, to turn from their sinful and selfish ways, so that all their prayers lifted in your name are heard by our Father in heaven, their sins forgiven, and healing may come to our land and to all nations of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, loving and forgiving Father, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Please turn to the lyrics provided or turn in your hymnal to hymn 688 and join me in singing the verses, Come, follow me, the Savior spake, verses 1, 4, and 5. Stop.